Mr. Lynch, Dr. Hagelin have gave a very compelling image of a unified field, the basis of our thought, the basis of our behavior. And these compelling images have concrete reality in the functioning of our brain. Because the quality of the functioning of your brain determines the quality of the functioning of your mind. If you want a creative mind, you need a creative brain. If you want a calm, alert mind, you need a restful, alert brain. This relationship goes the other way as well. The brain not only generates experience, but each experience we have changes the brain. I want to spend a few moments on this. Every time you see something, you hear something, the words now going into your ears are creating this cascade of electrical activity over your brain. Individual neuron by individual neuron is sending the information and you have as if there is if connecting hands will have this delicate network over your brain and that's what lets you see. That's what lets you decide. And every time you have an experience, that network gets a little stronger. Your brain is a river. It's not a rock. Indeed, 70% of the connections between your brain cells change every day. What we have here is an example of two dendrites. Dendrites are where one cell takes in information. And these little bumps that you see here are called dendritic spines. This is where one neuron is communicating with this neuron. Now, the, you have 100 billion neurons in your brain. Each one gets input from about 10,000 other neurons every second. You can imagine getting 10,000 phone calls a second and trying to integrate it together into one coherent output. That's the life of your brain cells. And what they do, I guess, for self-preservation is they're constantly changing. They're creating connections, losing connections. What we'll be doing here is showing you a, a movie, eight successive slides, which shows the connections in this one area over eight successive days. So everyone can see? Yeah, here we go. Wow, did you see that? Anyway, we'll show you again. This is what happened. Your brain is incredibly plastic. You notice the bumps, the spines coming out here and then disappearing again. This is what's happening every day. This is what's happening when you play golf and you work on getting that strong, powerful drive. You're actually creating specific networks in your brain and you're working them, working them, so they become very strong. They've, uh, we have some ex experiment here that was done with a chimpanzee that shows the result of continual experience. And all they did is they just touched the fingertips of the chimpanzee 20, 30 minutes, twice a day. And so here we have the experiment. It's a very benign experiment. I'm sure the chimpanzee loved it. And what they did is they looked at the brain here, which responded to when the fingertips were touched. And they did this for about three months. And notice these areas, 3D and 2D are the um, notation for the second and third fingertip. Notice what happened after three months. Now, can you see that? Look at this. What's happened is whenever you have an experience, you devote more of your brain to processing that. And so when you get something, be it academic or sports or music or a thought, it's just that, that connection is now strong. Now an important point here is all experiences change the brain. So when you're in a college class and you learn some, some fact, you've changed the brain. But also the whole college's experience is affecting the brain. College are often under, students are often under great pressure. Uh, they're often overtired, and this also changes the brain. When you're under high stress and fatigue, what happens is something called downshifting. Downshifting. You shift down to a more primitive, primitive style of functioning where the back part of your brain here, which is your concrete sensory area, talks to the motor system, and that's it. You're in a more of a stimulus response mode. Someone comes up and says, your hair doesn't look very good today and you get really angry at them. You don't have to get angry at them. They may be making a joke. What's happening is under stress and fatigue, or maybe your hair doesn't look good. Some people don't have to worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> under stress, under fatigue, what happens is this front part of the brain here, 
This is the CEO of the brain. This is where David Lynch is in your brain. <laughs> this is the director. All other parts of the brain send their information to the front, it gets integrated, it's sent back out. Under high stress, these connections are not used. And when you actually, sorry, when you actually have connections of this part of the brain and someone comes up and makes a comment about your hair, you say, oh, you didn't get a good sleep last night, or it's a joke, or he thinks I'm somebody else. You're not, resp you're not responding to the surface value of that relationship. You can see more fundamental to it. Now, what does happen over time under high stress and fatigue is this area, the, the CEO of the brain, is just not involved in usual experience. And that's what this picture is of. These are people lying down. This is their spinal cord, so their feet are coming out at you. You're looking up at the top of their brain. This is where the eyes are. And this, these are both during eyes closed rest. And what we're looking at is brain metabolic rate. Now, this Swiss cheese you see over here, they're not really holes here. But these are areas, these are functional lesions. That is, these parts of the brain are not involved in whatever you're doing. What this means is that you can, and this, this is, by the way, a very violent individual. It's a criminal. It's not a college student. <laughs> but high, <laughs> um, high drinking, high stress, um, mental stress, physical stress results in this. The brain is constantly being rewired. So you may be wondering, what can strengthen these frontal connections? And transcending does this. It actually directly exercises the frontal area. It makes it alive. It connects it with the other parts of the brain. When you meditate, you build up your CEO. You make connections to that part of the brain. So let us look at Shane Zisman's brain. What we have here, let's give a hand to Shane. What we have here is a blue stretch cap. Uh, in the blue stretch cap are uh, specific sensors and they're taking the electrical activity of the brain. What we see on the screen is the ongoing electrical activity. This line is what's happening right now. And now these big um, peaks here are when he blinks. Can you blink, Shane? There we go, thank you. So this is the left front, this is the right front, and these are the ones in between. Now, we're seeing his brain in technicolor, but his brain's not really functioning in technicolor. <laughs> but um, <laughs> here we have a brain laughing. <laughs> so what we'll do is we'll bring up one sensor, and we'll just look at this. We'll first bring up one sensor in the front, and we'll have him sit with eyes open, eyes closed, so you can get a feeling for how the brain waves are changing. Then we'll have him meditate, and you can just see the difference then. Now, this is what the brain looks like when you're looking out at 1,200 people looking at you. <laughs> the, the brain is very active. It's processing all these shapes, people, et cetera, the lights. And so you see this very fast activity here. You, it, this is one second. So this is about a 20, second per, 20 cycles per second wave. It's called beta activity. And this is what happens when the brain is actually processing. Many different parts of the brain are working very quickly, but they're not in coordination, so they don't line up. Let's get a second channel here. This channel will be in the back. And now, Shane, you can close your eyes. Now, noticing this very rhythmical activity, it's primarily in the back here. See this? This is called alpha activity. The back part of your brain is your visual center. Everything falling on your eyes streams to the back, and it just gets it completely revved up, and is processing it. Lights, colors, movement, edges. You close your eyes, and that part of the brain can rest. And so this is resting rhythm of the cortex. This is the brain which is a restful but awake. Restful alertness, pure wakefulness. Now Shane has been meditating since he was five. Typically when people just close their eyes, you don't see alpha activity in the front as we do with Shane. 
This is the, remember what the front is? CEO, thank you very much. It's very gratifying when you pick up the main points. This is the CEO. The CEO is always working, even when your eyes are closed. Self-talk, planning, analysis, it's always going on. This typically doesn't rest. This is the mental chatter that goes on in your brain. During the process of transcending, we see more of this in the front of the brain as well. Now seeing this in a person just sitting with eyes closed is something that happens when someone has been meditating for a long time. And that is the pattern of meditation begins to be more a natural part of how their brain functions. Total brain functioning and that experience which Mr. Lynch, Dr. Hagelin have been describing of wakefulness, of bliss, of unboundedness, of self-sufficiency, of energy, all of that becomes available for whatever you're doing. Okay, so now we'll ask Shane to begin Transcendental Meditation. And what we see here is quite remarkable. You don't typically see this. If there's any EEG people in the audience, I'm sure you're saying, where is that coming from? This very high amplitude alpha activity in the front of the brain. And notice how it's tracking what's in the back of the brain. See, it's going up and down here. And the same way it's going up and down in the back, here as well. The whole brain is as if coming into sync, into single unity of functioning, total brain functioning. And this is underlying that experience of wakefulness, of alertness. And notice also how it's seen throughout this whole record, this whole eight seconds. This is the experience, this is the brain state that's happening when you meditate. Okay, we'll let Shane meditate for a few minutes more and then we'll go on. Now you know that this cycling here, there's much more of this global alpha. Here it goes away, here it comes back again. The whole process is very dynamic with the mind settling down, coming back out, settling down. You become very familiar with that whole level of life. So now what we do is we're ask Shane to stop meditating so easily for a minute or so and then open his eyes. So the point I hoped you could see is that with TM practice, something is happening quite remarkable that that part of the brain which typically is always active, where we always have this very fast activity, as we see now as Shane's coming out of meditation, it can be restful, it can be alert. The whole brain can be functioning as one, total brain functioning. And since you're constantly creating and recreating your brain circuits, this experience helps to create a new type of circuit. What will your brain be like when you graduate? We've created a brain integration report card to try to quantify that. <laughs> this, this report card is asking what is the impact of your total college experience? The impact of the grades of the skills you'll learn are creating some local circuits of coherence in your brain, but what about that underlying level of wholeness, of wakefulness? The total brain functioning complements your academic report card. So I'd like to leave you with one thought. This is going back to the Wizard of Oz motif. Here we have the Wizard of Oz rewarding to this scarecrow. Remember what the scarecrow wanted? He wanted a brain. And remember what he did. He sacrificed himself being burned to death and, and brought off by the monkeys and his, the straw being torn off, all of that for a brain. And look what he gets, a piece of paper. So what I say to you is don't be content with just getting a piece of paper from your college degree. <laughs>